We're going to start with our standard furniture measurement. When you start your sketch, you're going to start it the same way. So I'm going to put a border around my page, and you should put a little border just inside. And we're going to do a back wall. Come over quite far to the right, and don't go down too far south. So you want to leave quite a bit at the bottom. If you go down too far, then your increments will be too big and your sketch will be too large. So, And we won't get the full width in. Now you need a scrap of paper, so keep it by your side. We're going to have an 8 foot wall, just like our grid. So cut that in half. Now you can check your measurement. Put your finger here at the end of your measurement and drawing, bring it up and then we'll see whether it's right or not. I always make the bottom one too large so I know to compensate and you might have a similar thing happen too so better to check it and not believe your assumptions. Okay, so zero at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have to take those increments, use your scrap of paper, and take the increments along the other way. We need 12 this way. So that's 8. Okay, so you've got 12, so 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And make a vertical at 12, because that's the end of our back wall. And let's use our pencil crayons for some of it. So when we make our black lines, we'll see them better. So we're going to put our eye level at 5 feet. Use your whole arm. So that's our eye level. And our vanishing point is going to go at 6 feet. It's in the center, so we can come up from six feet. And put your vanishing point right there. A standard measurement for the back of the sofa is about three feet high. So let's bring three feet over. And we're going to make an elevation against the wall here. Our sofa is seven feet wide, so we need to go one, two, three and a half boxes this way. So between ten and nine, put a mark, and three and a half boxes this way. One, two, three and a half. So between three and two, put another mark, and bring that up to our three feet. The height of the seat is going to be the same for everybody's sketch, everybody's box drawing, and everybody's final drawing. So the seat is at one and a half. So you might want to note that out here. One and a half feet. And the three feet, you might note that. That was our back. Now, arms are usually at two and a half, but if you look at this, there is a great deal of depth from here to here. This isn't three feet, so let's go three and a half for our back. We'll bring that across, three and a half. And look where our arms are. 
they're they're not very far below that. So I think we should make them a little more than two and a half. There's our three and a half for our back, which is unusual. So bring that up. We're going to do three and a half. And our arm, we're going to do a little more, not quite three, but a little more than two and a half. So that'll be our arm, two and a half plus feet, okay. So we've got the height of the back, the height of the arm, the height of the seat. Now we have to bring everybody forward onto the floor. We use our vanishing point and our whole arm and bring that along. And do the same thing on the other side. Now we have to choose a depth. We, when you sketch, you don't usually have dimensions this way. So what we can do is just make a guess at how wide this should be how deep this should be based on how wide it is. And this is the least distorted view of it, this bottom part. So that's the best place to judge. And you know what happens when we have a horizontal crossing a perspective line, we need verticals. So start putting up some verticals here. And let's bring our seat forward. Okay, there's our seat forward. And let's bring our back forward. Even though our back here is not very deep, we can see that it's probably quite shallow. We should bring it forward. Let's bring it forward on the seat first. Let's put a little thickness there. And you see, we've got another horizontal crossing a perspective line. So we've got to bring verticals in. And you use the back of the chair to find the angle this should be at. See at the back? See where it's touching the back here? We have to bring that forward using the vanishing point. I know it's fussy and it's very little, but it just to keep things Correct. We should bring that forward. So that's the point where the arm should start. Now these should line up across. If they don't, then maybe one of your angles is slightly off. So you just kind of tickle it into place. That's okay in a sketch. You can do that. I think my horizontal is a little off. So what have we got? We've got our back that's coming out like this and going across like this. There's our back. There's our arm. There's the top of our seat of our chair. That one and a half is the top of the seat. Now, we've got a lot going on in terms of shape. The back, all we have to do with the back is curve it. It's almost flat. When we get to the center, it's almost flat. So we just need to make a lovely little oval here. Go all the way out to the furthest edge to make your 
over so you do see some at the back so just echo that a little at the back oops we should have this line so that'll be the front and that'll be the back So you should have a little thickness there. So we're quite above eye level. This isn't. This is almost a elevation. It's hardly a perspective at all because it's shot right down the center of it at its kind of its eye level. We have these lovely curves. So, but they happen under the top of the seat of the chair. This line is this line. We have to come down a little bit for cushion. There's not a lot of cushion, but there's some. And then we've got this beautiful wood, this beautiful wooden piece, and it's even thicker. And we're going to curve this now. We can put the little guga out there. There's a little guga. And we can curve this. Now we've put in the lower part, right? We've got it down here. So we've got a curve down here. So there's the top of the seat of the chair. There's the thickness of the cushion. There's the wooden piece. And we had to come all the way down there, put our little goo and we have to make sure we've got a goo on this side. And there's our curve. We'll have to try and echo the same curve. Use negative shape. See the shape of that and try to get the same thing on the other side. You see, all the formal drawings that we do, they really boil down to the same thing. Some of it you sketch in, some of it you use your ruler for, and you draw in more formally. But whatever you're doing, you have to sketch. You have to find. And we've got this now. I'm going to put a straight line to represent that. I think it will help me later on. So we've got this, we've got that. Now, this part, the reason I need that straight line is because I need to bring that back to the vanishing point. Bring it up to the top of the seat of the chair. Bring it back to the back of the seat of the chair, which is here. Because we've got to echo that curve. We've got to echo the curve at the front. And here's the curve that goes with the cushion. So see all the thickness? So we've got the piece of wood. There's the wood. Then we've got the piece of cushion. Then back here, we have to echo this last curve. So I've got to find a way to make that the same. You might find that it's a little bit tricky to do the same thing on the other side. I don't know why, but one side always seems easier than the other. But maybe you won't have that problem. Now see, don't forget, here we have to put the thickness of the cushion. There's the thickness of the cushion as it comes around. Then we have to echo that curve at the back. And now we've got depth, you see? That was not going to be able to be accomplished without making that a little bit higher, the back a little bit higher. This is where we started, right back here at the back. I have to know where that is because I want to make an X from the very back on the floor to the front.
and from here to here. Now, this should be where 6 is. So, I already know where the center is. I could have just used the 6. And we've got to draw this now, this piece underneath. Choose a point, take it across. Remember, we're in one point, so all of these lines are straight. And when they cross the other side, you need your vanishing point. Now this is already looking like what we have over there. You know what to do? Check this and make sure this is the same width. Make it so, even if it doesn't look like it, something may be slightly off and you just make it correct. And take that to your vanishing point. And then do a smaller box on the inside. Use your vanishing point. And then it's just a matter of making a little curve here. And this line is one we need. This line is one we need because it shows us where the back is. Now, we're not going to see these two lines at the back. We only see them at the front. When you're putting on the drapery or the shawl at the other side, you need to put the thickness on. So, it's going to go down like this. And it's going to go over like this. But what's good about it is that it shows the shape. It shows the shape of the cushion. And it's thick, so it actually covers up some of this. So, but we can see it on the other side. You would show it with your black ink by just drawing it like this because it's fur so you just draw it like this you may want something like this on your sofa or a furry carpet you may have a furry carpet so to go back and outline it all And you could do thinner inside lines and thicker outside lines. And these cushions have shapes too. And these you can just put the two lines that we put. And our sketch figure, if we put her in, remember her eyes are on the eye level. She would fit in with our, with her drawing. And she looks like she would be okay with that. Now, for the little floor plan view of this one, it's seven feet wide, and we can't show all of the little ins and outs. We can't even show that this is curved. All we can show are the arms and that the seat comes in. But I think what we could show 
is a little bit of that so that we can see that the arms do come in a little bit. You could also put the shawl that's hanging over the side. You could put that on, I think. But we can't really show much more than that on the little floor plan. And then don't forget, you're going to put your reference picture here as well.